What's going on guys and welcome back to No Deflection Gaming. Today we're taking a look at a quick little farm guide for you for the Heart of Anuark, one of the better items for thrust damage players. So here is the item, Heart of Anuark. So you're looking at 25 decks, thrust ward I have on there currently, thrust damage, keen awareness, and bloodletting. In my opinion, this is not one of the best rings anymore. Um, it's a good ring, but in my opinion, it's not one of the best. Bloodletting is kind of meh on these kind of builds, in my opinion, smoothbow ring. In general, it's just a broader, better ring. Hardy is uh, pretty much needed for every class. If you're running 150 decks and you think you don't need Hardy, I think you're wrong, but you do you. So I'm just going to show you a quick guide on how to farm for this. So let's just run through my current um, setup. So I'm in medium right now. So nothing crazy. Freedom, refresh, Brazil. Physical, refresh, Brazil. Brazil, relentless freedom. Elemental, refresh, Brazil. Freedom Refresh Result. So basically, this is kind of like my PvP setup, nothing crazy there. Uh, Stand Recovery, Divine Thrust Protection, Smooth Bone Ring, because it's awesome. Doom Chance Earring. The two big things to take from this is going to be the Greatsword, which has Leeching Crosscut, which is 100% required. Um, you can run other Leeching and or Life Sustaining builds, Sword and Shield, all that good stuff. I'm specifically using the Greatsword and the Hammer. Uh, for the CCs and the heals. So Legion Crosscut is needed on the Great Sword for this. And then you have a Wicked Hammer, which has Trinket Recovery and Legion Path of Destiny. Um, both, I wouldn't say are required, but they are great to have for this as you need as much sustain as possible in farming these uh, kind of bosses. And then I'm just running a Minor Heart Run and Detonate. Nothing crazy there. So let's just jump into the uh, skills, I guess. So we're, I'll be running 200 con. 150 strength, 50 dex with my food popped. Um, weapon mastery, we'll take a look at the great hammer. So we have wrecking ball, shockwave, legion path. Um, pretty simple setup, nothing crazy here as well. Same with the great sword, I'm running full onslaught. Note that when you are an onslaught, you do take the 15% rend. Um, one thing to take note there, so you're not always going to want to have this out when fighting this boss. Uh, but it's, it's in general, you know, the uh, legion crosscut is great for this build. It does work well. You might need to kite a little bit here and there, but in my opinion, it's a great setup for these kind of uh, fights. All right, so then let's jump into um, the path on how to get up there, and uh, let's go from there. So one other thing I would like to mention is when you're going for these kind of boss farms, you always want to have some type of hard CC, like a hammer or a sword and shield, shield bash. Either one of those work fine. And ultimately, you can use any weapon so long as you have sustain. I said that before. Sustain is the ultimate key here. You can use pots as needed, but the CC is a huge deal when you're dealing with multiple mobs and or bosses that just have a lot of damage. Um, so having things like Wrecking Ball and Shockwave are great. So as you can see here, we're running up in light armor, running along the edge there, jumping down. And we're going to block jump up this little thing here. Don't worry about the archer. He's terrible. He misses almost every single time, as you can see. Um, but you want to be in light armor to have that extra dodge roll. It's just easier. I just took my chest off to be in light. And like I said, you can use any weapon to really get up here. You can use a rapier, use a spear, you know, use skewer to move yourself faster. Uh, I use the greatsword personally. You can use ultimately anything that gives you a little additional uh, speed getting up here. Dodge roll when required. Regen pot when needed. Health pot when needed. Um, we're just going to kind of kite these guys up and around this corner. We're going to jump up on the ledge to the right or to the left. The right one just seems to be easier for me. And jump down onto this little ledge and then hang out until they all leash. Now you're probably going to ask yourself, deflection, what the hell do I do if I fall off? Well, this is what you do. When you fall off, you'll be in this area. You can run down away from the mobs. Um, because as you can see, they all are all chasing my ass away. So you can just leash them at some point. I'm actually testing here how far I have to go before they actually unleash. It's quite a distance. I was very surprised. Um, I didn't think I'd have to go back that far. But uh, as you can see, they were uh, keen on tapping me, if you feel, if you know what I'm saying. So as they are now all leashed, we're going to run back over toward them and uh, jump back up into our spot. Now I'll show you how what happens if you do fall off, what you need to do to get back up to that same area. So if you fall off, it's actually almost better. It's a little easier, I guess, uh, to get back up there to give you an idea of how it, how to do it. So as you can see, we're running back up here. You'll pull less mobs doing it this way. Um, if you fall off and you leash them, it might be easier to get up onto the little ledge we were showing you earlier. So maybe that is your go-to. Either way works. It's not a. It's neither here nor there. So as you can see, we're running up, doing the same thing, jumping up onto the first ledge. Moving over, 
falling down onto the smaller ledge and we're just gonna block because um, sometimes they could still hit you through that rock I don't know exactly like you just saw there I don't know exactly why that happens so I would suggest blocking or just staying as close to that stone as possible heal up when needed and the other thing to know is when these guys finally do leash um, we're gonna try to kill this one archer in the corner here first I'm gonna show you right now this guy right here he's gonna chill out there in the corner you're gonna want to kill him first before you aggro um, on Uark. Uh, corner, you're going to aggro this archer and beat the hell out of him, trying not to aggro anything else. Uh, hopefully you don't aggro on Uark. Unfortunately, I did there. But really, it's not hard. You just keep bashing on this uh, archer till he's dead, like I'm doing right here. And then you're basically just going to jump off the ledge. That's how you're going to aggro him down to our area. So I just jumped off there, run over into this little side spot, heal up if you need to, and then uh, just hang out and wait for on Uark. And then uh, when he gets down there, just beat the hell out of him. There you go. So here we are, killing Anuark, the proud. Um, I just sped this up like crazy because no one wants to see me fight this thing for, I think, like four and a half minutes straight. Um, any type of glitching you see here, that's literally just brimstone the way it is. It, my PC just bogs down whenever I'm in this area. Now, Anuark's going to have multiple abilities pop. Um... I don't know if you could see it right here or not yet, yeah, right above its head. Um, it doesn't actually show it, does it? No, normally it'll say, like, um, if it has any type of special things happening to it, like, it'll pop out these lasers sometimes. Sometimes it'll have, like, a frost attack of some sort, but the lasers are pretty general what you're going to see. Um, ultimately, you kite him back and forth away from the lasers. That way the lasers aren't hitting you. He'll spawn more lasers, as you can see there. He spawned another one down below um, in the wall, which is great. And uh, you just want to cut him back and forth. Use pots when needed. Use your CC as much as possible. Um, you know, whatever you guys want to use weapon-wise. I just like to use the hammer and the greatsword. I've done this with uh, sword and shield, hammer. I think hammer tends to be the number one go-to CC weapon. So we'll play this out, let it go, um, and then we'll show you what the what I get from this guy. All right, now we're down to the last couple of hits here. So like I said, medium or heavy is my preferred go-to when fighting these kind of bosses. Um, you don't need to crazy light dodge roll out of anything. So like I said, I'm just smacking him in the face. And then we'll end it with one shockwave. And that's it. So unfortunately, I didn't pull the ring again. But, you know, I did get some obsidian, some other stuff. So that's how you make the kill. If you guys like these videos, you know, let me know what else you want to see done. Once again, I appreciate you all. Peace out.